Hello everyone, welcome or welcome back to my channel. This is Miss May. In my channel, I do a variety of lifestyle videos. So as you know, I love to test products. I'm also a fitness junkie. I previously made this video about how to build your six pack. I made this video of my fat loss journey. I made this video, this video, and about three years ago, I made a video about Fitbit watch compared to Apple watch. Apple watches have been improved recently. Ta-da! I got this. This is the Apple Ultra. And guess what? It eliminated a lot of the issues that I have with Apple Watch in the past. So as you see, I have both Fitbit and Apple Watch right here. A little recap of my Fitbit compared to Apple Watch video. I was wearing them at the same time doing different activities. So in my last video compared to Fitbit and Apple Watch, there were several flaws. First of all, in that video, I was wearing a Fitbit using my left arm and I was wearing my Apple Watch using my right arm and I was tracking the exact same amount of steps when I took a walk. And some of you guys said, well, your left watch is your non-dominant hand, your right hand is your dominant hand, maybe it will be different, it's better to try it on the same wrist. So, <laughs> this week, I'm going to wear both of them on the same wrist to compare if it actually tracks the same amount of steps as I walk. Second of all, in my previous video, I was comparing an older model of Apple Watch. It was like one of the earliest model. Uh, one of the problems with earlier models of Apple Watch is the battery life. But with the new Ultra one, you have 36 hours of battery life on normal use. And if you turn it on low battery mode, it lasts for 72 hours. And my friend said, if you turn on the theater mode, it will last for about five days. And that's as much as the Fitbit. In the past six years, I've been very loyal to Fitbit. I've used Charge 2, I've bought Charge 3, and I've bought three Charge 5. Why would I buy so many Fitbit? What I noticed is the battery life of my Fitbit, it actually doesn't last very long after a year. I've been using Fitbit for the past six years and I had five different Fitbit. Okay, my Fitbit is great. The battery life lasts about five days and I love the fitness and wellness, like all of the data that Fitbit provided me. But usually after one year, the battery is dying. So right now for the Fitbit, I have to charge it three times a day. And I feel like it's not, not gonna last for over three months. I think after three months, this one will completely die. So the problem with Fitbit personally was that maybe I used it a lot because I wear it every single day and it's water resistant so I wear it in the shower, I wear it in the swimming pool. So maybe that's also what makes it, I don't know, die faster. But apparently I retire one Fitbit every single year. So within the past five years, the amount of money that I spend on Fitbit is enough to buy an Ultra Apple Watch. So I feel like it's time for me to move on and try the Apple Watch. So in today's video, I'm going to compare the Fitbit Charge 5 versus the Apple Watch Ultra from the 2023 fall model. So we're gonna see the consistency of the data between the two fitness trackers when I do different types of sports. Before we start, like and subscribe, and also check out my other videos that I filmed way in the past. And we're gonna compare how I feel about the Apple Watch now that we have the latest model. I'm gonna do some unheated yoga. We're gonna try the heated yoga class later, but today we're gonna try the unheated yoga. Feels so tight today because we did a lot of weight training yesterday. So the difference between the Fitbit and Apple Watch is with Fitbit, you can only have five exercise for shortcuts on your watch versus the Apple Watch, you can actually have a lot. Um, however, the Fitbit, you can organize which one comes first. Got yoga. Okay, so now they started almost like together, maybe three seconds apart. Started. <laughs> Hey guys, something just annoying just happened. I've been practicing yoga for 20 minutes and for some reason my watch accidentally paused. Oh, it's right here. I accidentally hit something and it took a pause. Oh my gosh, I hate it. I wish it locked the screen when I start. It just showed four minutes while my Fitbit was cracking it. I did 20 minutes. 
Oh, that was so annoying. Okay, we're starting again. See, it just automatically pause. Pause. I think when you do this, it pauses it. That is one thing that was like not good because there's so many buttons and like when you're doing stuff, I think I accidentally paused. But both of them are tracking at one right now. Okay, we're gonna try like from the start and I'll show you guys afterwards. <laughs> Okay, so I just finished my yoga workout. So this is my results. For this Apple Watch, I burned 129 active calories, 184 like total calories. For Fitbit, it was 122 calories in total. So I would say Apple Watch shows that it burns more calories than the Fitbit. Fitbit says 122, my Apple Watch says 129. So in the after workout, you can see that the Fitbit says I burn less calories than Apple Watch, but it's not the entire case because during my workout, I was still looking at my watches. First of all, I practiced yoga for way longer than what I documented. So I restarted my Fitbit and restarted my Apple Watch. But during class, you know, in yoga, we do active. I was moving around, but at the end of the yoga session, I was holding half pigeon for three minutes. The seated forward fold, I was like folding right here. Holding my static pose for like three minutes for each pose. So up until I started to cool down and stretch, my Fitbit actually documented way more calories. But the moment I started to cool down, my Fitbit is documenting way less calories versus the Apple Watch is documenting more of my static hold so I would say at my Apple watch tracks the passive form of yoga more calories my Fitbit tracks more active movement a little bit higher and usually the cool down like is when Apple watch tracks more when Fitbit stop tracking a lot you wear an Apple watch to yin yoga I think it will track way more calories than Fitbit if you wear Apple watch and Fitbit to like a fit flow at yoga where you just go sweaty Fitbit will track a little bit more in the sweat part of the yoga to do a little bit walk in the outside to see how they track the steps stay tuned hey guys we're gonna go for a walk right now apple watch has an outdoor walk tracker and fitbit just says walk but let's go for a walk this is pretty interesting my fitbit says i burned 18 calories but my apple watch burned nine active calories see the difference all right, my Fitbit says 49 calories, Apple Watch says 26, and it says 40.4 uh, miles on Apple Watch, and I think it was 0.44, yeah, 0.44 on the Apple Watch, on the Fitbit, but it was still connecting to GPS. The GPS connection, though, I would say Apple Watch is a little bit more accurate, but it's like my Fitbit is telling me that I burned twice as much as my Apple Watch. My Fitbit said I burn 140 calories, so my Apple Watch says it's 73. So definitely different. All right, so here are the results we have. The Fitbit says I burn 228 calories, and this one says 125, so it's almost at half. But the actual GPS data is actually very comparable. Fitbit says 2.19, and this one is 1.91. Total calories is 183. That's way lower than the Fitbit total calorie. So according to Apple Watch, my total calories is 183, including both active and resting calories. And the Fitbit says 228, which is 40 calories, 45 calories higher. But I do like the fact that Apple Watch gives you the elevation gain versus the Fitbit doesn't. But the Apple Watch also doesn't give me the steps. So the total steps is 6,752. On Fitbit, it says 6,326. So I would say it's pretty comparable between the two. So Apple Watch tracked a little bit more in terms of the steps. All right, guys, it's kind of the end of the day. We're going to wind down. Apple Watch actually registered about 100 steps more than the Fitbit. But 
but it's pretty minimal um, difference. Total amount of total steps every single day. It's exactly the same. Now let's take a look about the total calorie burned. So according to Fitbit, at 827, I burned a total of 1,730 calories. And according to Apple Watch, I burned a total of 546 active calorie, 1,200 resting energy, 1,754. Both of the watches actually told me that I burned a total of 1700 calories today as of 828. So as you can see, if your goal overall is to track your steps and track how many calories you burned wearing a watch, both trackers are pretty comparable. They give me basically exactly the same results. Actually, when you add it up, it didn't really make that much of a difference. I'm gonna charge my Fitbit really, really good tonight so that we can compare the sleep data. Day two, I decided to take both trackers to my gym to go through my regular gym routine, which consists in some sort of a cardio, usually on Stairmaster. It elevates my heart rate without high impact, and then do some weight training and finish maybe with some more cardio. All right, 15 minutes done. As you can see, um, Apple Watch tracks way more calories than Fitbit. Way more. So Apple Watch track 80. Active Fitbit tracks 69 calories. So Apple Watch definitely tracks 10 more calories, but the Fitbit is also up every single increment. So my Fitbit just went up by increment, but still Apple Watch tracked a little bit more active calories. So we have 124 versus 121. From the weight training, pretty comparable. Actually, they pretty much track the same amount of calories for weight training. Weight training, exactly the same, 125. Fitbit actually tracks slightly more in the elliptical machine, but they're very comparable. Only five calories more, so Fitbit tracks a little bit more than the Apple Watch. After my regular gym session, I took a workout class with weight and cardio in between. It's kind of like interval training but more functional strength. And you can see that my Fitbit actually tracks significantly way more calories. It's 196 calories on the Fitbit and 147 active calories on the Apple Watch. So I felt like the Fitbit tracks way more calories when your body is moving around, jumping around, hopping around, because I think the mechanisms of Fitbit tracking calories is through the movement more than the heart rate. And then I did a battle ropes class, which I believe is a lot of cardio and a lot of functional strength. My Fitbit tracks 140 calories and Apple Watch is 130 active calories. Definitely Fitbit tracks more, but there's also more movement of my hands. Hey guys, today, wow. My Apple Watch actually tracks it one more thousand more. Fitbit says 10,800. Apple Watch says 11,800. That's like 1,000 more on the Apple Watch. So it's actually different from what people expected. My Apple Watch actually consistently tracks more steps compared to my Fitbit. This is the second day it does that. We'll see what tomorrow does. After a heated power vinyasa class, my Apple Watch says I burned 174 active calories and my Fitbit says I burned 160 calories, which means Apple Watch definitely tracked more. And it's actually pretty significantly more considering 20 calories out of the 160 is actually pretty high. After the boxing conditioning class, I burned, well, Fibbe said I burned 284. Apple Watch said I burned 268. So Fibbe definitely tracked 20 calories more in a one hour workout, which I think it's somewhat significant different. Hey guys, it's been three days since I started this 
comparison challenge wearing two watches at the same time like an idiot so on monday i actually did a variety of workouts i went to the steer master stair master stair climber i did traditional weight lifting i also did a little bit of elliptical mushing today i went to a hot yoga class and i went to a boxing class where we punch backs for some of the workouts such as the traditional weight training my fitbit actually tracks almost exactly the same as the apple watch the workout classes where there's strength training cardio strength cardio i realized my fitbit actually tracks more calories than my apple watch conversely for workouts that are more like stationary where you don't move much but you're still moving such as yoga my apple watch actually tracks more than fitbit i'm just gonna go for a quick walk just to decompress and relax in my walk instead of treating it as a workout it's more like a walking meditation just to rest let's go so after walk i noticed that there is a significant difference between the calorie tracked fitbit says i burned 124 calories twice as much as the active calories tracked by apple watch which is only 60 ish definitely a huge discrepancy between the two trackers the next day on thursday i decided to take a workout class which is a hit workout it involves running on the treadmill sprint going a little bit slower later and resistant training so after Afterwards, my Apple Watch tracked 264 calories versus my Fitbit tracks 276, which is 10 calories higher than Apple Watch. Not a huge difference, but it definitely is a little bit tiny higher. And then I decided to take a Reformer Pilates class. To be honest, I feel like it's very easy for me. I think it's because I also do power yoga. I felt like it was a breeze. So my Apple Watch tracked 90 calories, but my Fitbit actually tracked 138 calories. That's a lot more than Apple Watch. So personally, I think it's because I was using the reformers. My arms are moving a lot with the strap. I think it probably thinks I'm moving way more than I was. It's way more about core and balancing. It was super easy. I definitely don't think I burned 138 calories. Probably burned 100 calories. At the end of Thursday, my steps tracked by the two trackers are very comparable. On Friday, I took a circuit class. My Apple Watch says 220 and my Fitbit is about 240, so Fitbit tracked a slightly little bit more. On Saturday, I took a cardio dance class. I'm not a good dancer, I'm not coordinated, but I was focusing on the cardio factor. I was checking my two watches to see how much calories I burned. And of course, Apple Watch tracked a little bit less, Fitbit tracked a little bit more. But after 70 minutes, my Fitbit tracked significantly more, like 60 calories more. That's a significant difference between the two. And then I did some weightlifting at the gym, feeling good, and the two trackers actually tracked very similar calories calories for weightlifting. I think the reason for the cardio dance was because there were a lot of wrist movements during dance class. I think that's why Fitbit was registering more calories and more steps. Hey guys, now it's been a whole week. We're at the end of our experiment. Let's look at the other source of data and do our final comparison. So now let's take a look at the sleep data that's tracked by both trackers. So let's take a look at Monday, April 1st. So my Fitbit tracked a total of seven hours and 32 minutes of sleep versus my Apple Watch only tracked 6 hours and 37. That's like one hour difference of a sleep. Even the time in bed was a little bit lower. Um, my Fitbit tracked 7 hours of total sleep versus my Fitbit tracked 7 hours and 30 minutes. So the next day, um, April 3rd, very different. My Fitbit actually tracked 8 hours and 24 minutes versus my Apple Watch tracked 7 hours and 37 minutes. For April 4th, um, my Fitbit tracked 6 hours and 35 minutes versus Apple Watch tracked 7 hours and 7 minutes. April 5th, um, my Apple Watch tracked 8 hours and 42 minutes versus my Apple Watch tracked 9 hours and 6 minutes. On um, April 6th, my Apple Watch tracked 5 hours and 4 minutes versus Fitbit tracked 4 hours and 6 minutes. The total amount of sleep tracked by both trackers are very off from each other. Both trackers, they show the sleep stages. As you can see, the comparison from the sleep stages also vary from day to day. As you can see from the sleep cycle tracking, 
both trackers actually identify similar patterns but for some days it's more similar um sleep cycle was very up from the two like apple watch showed that i was awake a lot in a very long chunk of time versus my fitbit was like you're on and off on and off from the sleep because my baby was waking up i don't know why apple watch said that i slept for five hours and in my mind i totally didn't sleep for five hours i wasn't in bed for seven hours either i woke up at six i went to bed around one so how was i in bed for seven hours so i would say for the sleep data every day when i wake up i do a little reflection of my sleep before i look at the data i would have to say that my apple watch tracking sleep was very 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 off it's like almost completely off like there were days my apple watch said you had a lot of sleep and i was so tired the next day and it says you have a lot of deep sleep and REM sleep but i wasn't and there were times i remember waking up for a long period of time in the middle of the night and i took a look at my watch and took a look at my phone to see what the time stay in and the next day when i look at my apple watch the time that i wake was very off from what i remembered in the middle of the night well apple watch Watch actually gives you a general pattern of sleep and it also identifies when you're awake it was a very off sleep data so if you're relying on a tracker to track your sleep I highly recommend using a Fitbit uh, whoop, or to use the aura ring to track their sleep because the Apple watch tracking sleep is very off I don't even trust the data at all another thing that I don't like about the Apple watch was that for my Apple watch for it to track the data from sleep you want to track your wrist temperature rises and falls you have to like either set up a sleep schedule or manually start the sleep focus so your watch has to be on sleep focus to track that wrist temperature data versus my Fitbit just automatically tracks when I fall asleep when I when my body stop moving the Fitbit tracker is definitely way more sensitive when it comes to tracking sleep and I really really hate the fact that every day I put my sleep from 12 to 8 but on some days I try to sleep at 11 on some days i try to wake up after 8 manually change the blah 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 the watch settings in my apple health which is like really annoying of course you can turn it off but on the other days i have to manually turn it back on it was just very off versus my fitbit definitely way more automatic it's way more nicer it's way more user friendly there's less of the friction of i have to do this and this and this this and that so i definitely think that apple watch definitely complicated the process of tracking my sleep uh, we've talked about the sleep data now let's talk about my overall tracking the comparison of the two watches first thing first is that i realized that fitbit tracks more based on the wrist movement and apple watch actually uses a little bit more on the baseline data with the heart rate data um, for example with workouts that are more jumpy um, with a lot of wrist movement fitbit tracks way more than apple watch so these workouts include battle ropes like when i do this <laughs> hit training boxing when you do a lot of this wrist movement and guess what cardio dance it tracks a little bit more calories you know i'm a hand talker sometimes when i sit down to film a video i talk with my hands i do a lot of this and when i do this my fitbit will automatically tracks a little bit more steps when it comes to a workout with less wrist movement these workouts include the stair climbers you know when you climb the stairs you're not climbing like this yoga like when you hold the poses but we do heated yoga and my heart rate is very high because my apple watch actually relies a little bit more on my heart rate none of them are exactly accurate the truth is probably somewhere in between the second thing is that fitbit definitely overestimates the calorie burnt in walking think about it in 30 minutes i probably walk one mile one mile and a half but in 30 minutes when i run on a treadmill i can probably run for three miles three and a half miles so just think about the amount of energy you put in to get the mileage there is no way you burn the same calories that you walk for two miles versus you run for three miles if you wear a fitbit just remember it probably overestimate the calories you burned in walking so if it says you burn i burned 200 calories in walking it probably burned 110 120 it's way off i would say so there are definitely times when people try to use fitbit to track their calories in walking and try to lose weight and they don't lose weight they think they burned 400 calories from the walk but they probably only burned 250 
So the third thing that I realized was that when you do different activities in your life, your Fitbit actually automatically tracks your zone minutes versus the Apple Watch doesn't, which is kind of sucks. There's different things we do in life that will elevate our heart rate, like you're moving heavy objects, back and forth, like if you're moving, doing yard work in the sun, your heart rate will go high, you'll be like moving up and down. Fitbit will automatically track that like you are doing a um, activity that's exerting your heart if you're getting like hard zone minute of zone two. It probably is not important to everyone, but personally, I think that comes in handy when I teach exercise teach yoga so when I teach yoga I'm not on the mat to practice with the participants I'm actually walking around in a hundred degrees room so it's very I would say it actually exerts a lot my heart rate goes high it actually burns a lot of calories sometimes I burn more calories in teaching yoga than doing yoga. My Fitbit actually recognized that and it was shows that on the Wednesday when I was teaching a 75 minute heated yoga my Fitbit recognized I burned 300 calories in that 75 minutes because I was walking around a lot, my heart rate was high versus my Apple Watch didn't recognize at all. So that goes to my total calories burned and the total calories burned for that day was very off between the two. So in that regards, I would say I love the automaticity of Fitbit that it will recognize I'm doing a activity that is starting my body and it will track the calories and my heart rate in the zone during the activity, which I love. So number four is about sleep. Like I said previously in the video, my Fitbit automatically recognized I was asleep. I don't have to worry about like it's just very natural I go to bed and just unwind and I also feel like the Fitbit data is a little bit more accurate okay again none of this is accurate to the bone if you really want to have the accurate data you need to do a sleep study in a sleep clinic my Fitbit is good enough it represents how I felt the next day it represents the time stand that I wake up from my sleep if either the baby is just awake or I just had to go to the bathroom very very accurate in, in that regards whether if the sleep cycle represents very accurate I don't know, but I would say Fitbit is way more accurate when it comes to sleep data. All right, so the next thing I want to talk about within the app is menstruation tracker. I think two years ago when I was trying to conceive in 2022, my Fitbit was big help. I actually bought Fitbit Premium just to be able to track the health data for trying to conceive. And it also has a really good menstrual tracker. I will take a, you can take a look here. You can overview the month. You can take a look at what you can put into the menstruation. And then it shows that what's the next ovulation window. A pinpoint a day for ovulation. And you can see them, you can scroll up and scroll down based on based on the data. It's actually super, super easy to use. I felt like when I was trying to conceive, my Fitbit was the best thing ever. Now I moved to Apple Watch Ultra 2, which also has the recognition for wrist temperature. To detect the wrist temperature, you have to be in sleep focus mode at night. So you have to manually set or automatically set a timer. I will have to manually kickstart my sleep focus. App, the Apple Health app for tracking menstruation is super complicated. Uh, it. I wish that they just put a calendar for me so I can pinpoint which day would flow and then pinpoint any symptoms. So the way that the Apple Health data was like, I was showing my friend who was a data scientist and he was like, this is weird. I was like, it's very unintuitive. Okay, so I am a data person. I used to work with the data science. So I know some of the principles in representing data. So the way that they make the menstruation in Apple Health app is super, super, it's kind of like menstrual health for dummies. For any woman who are very on when it comes to trying to conceive, it, oh, it's almost impossible to take a look at the data and then just, like to maneuver the data to. So I would say that if you use Apple Health, I would say download another app called Flow to help track. So I really don't like I really don't like it, but I think it's more about the app, less about the watch. Phone app function, Fitbit app is way better than Apple Apple function because with Apple, you have three apps to control. You have the Apple Fitness, Apple Health, and Apple Watch to maneuver everything with the data, to connection with other people, setups for your Apple Watch. It's better just to do one app. And guess what? I've had friends who used Apple Watch for three years and don't know how to find their VO2. Why? It's because the app is very unintuitive. It's just like, you don't know where it goes. It's just so weird. 
So I would say that the Apple Watch, the Apple apps are very hard to navigate. They're like, do I go to Apple Fitness? Do I go to Apple Health? Or do I go to Apple Watch? If I go to Apple Health, how do I get VO2 data? Is it in cardio? Is it in heart health? Very weird. You almost have to know what to look to actually know what to find. Simplify the app, make it a little bit easier for the users. If it has an advantage with the SPO2 data, so if you don't know, there's been a lawsuit and then someone claimed the intellectual property of the oxygen saturation. So Apple Watch can no longer detect your oxygen saturation if you're using a later model because Apple, I think, lost the lawsuit with the intellectual property, which sucks. Fitbit actually gives you the SPO data that Apple Watch no longer gives you. It also gives you a daily readiness score. So I've had a lot of people using Whoop that gives you like a daily readiness score to see if you're ready to train again. But Fitbit actually gives you that as well, especially if you have Fitbit Premium, you can track it. I like it because it tracks your heart rate variability, it tracks your sleep, it tracks your activity level to say, hey, today, train hard. Today, not so much, maybe take an easy jog, um, maybe not to do so much cardio. So I do love the daily readiness score that my Fitbit was giving me. So I think Fitbit Premium was actually worth it for me, especially when I was pregnant. When I was pregnant, I didn't want to push myself too hard. Apple Watch do have a good life expectancy. My husband's friend actually gifted him a Apple Watch. It was like, it's like the Apple Series 3 and it still works. After five years, Apple Watch still works. My Fitbit never lasted for longer than two years. Always after a year or year and a half, my battery always dies. So among the six years of my life using my Fitbit tracker, I had five different Fitbit. Comment down below if it happens to you. And I use it as it tells you, like it says, it's water resistant, you can take it in shower, you can take it in swim. So I did. So I don't know, Fitbit. I would I was gonna get another Fitbit, but then I was like, I can't be keep buying a Fitbit tracker every single year. So that's why I switched to Apple Watch. At least this one will last me, I hope, three years. Alright, so now let's compare the steps and daily calories from the two. And here I made a table. I underlined the number that was higher, so it's easier for us to take a look. To compare, I think the reason why on Tuesday it was tracking more was because on Tuesday I was filming a YouTube video and when I film my YouTube video I use my hands a lot when I use my use my hands a lot my Fitbit tracks a little bit more steps even though I wasn't walking on Wednesday I believe also it was from making the YouTube video overall I would say that the steps track between the two tractors are very similar so the only difference is that I believe if you're walking outdoors my Apple watch may track slightly more when you outdoor walk there were people saying that um, their tracking set was the two watch and the Apple Watch wasn't updating. So the difference is your Apple Watch doesn't update the number of steps as you're walking until you finish your walk. So that's why if you're taking one or two watches and take a look and then like, hey, my Fitbit was like updating my numbers like by the seconds my Apple Watch wasn't, it's because of my, your Apple Watch would detect and update later. Now let's take a look at the daily calories. So on Sunday, Monday, Tuesday, my Apple Watch tracked more calories. Actually on Sunday, Monday, Tuesday, Thursday, Apple Watch was tracking more calories. Except for on Wednesday, my Fitbit was tracking more calories. And I'm so glad I was wearing my Apple, my both of them on Wednesday because Wednesday and Fridays are actually my yoga teaching day where I teach in a 100 degree room teaching an active vinyasa based class. So I was walking around, I was moving up and down, sometimes demonstrating. And my Fitbit actually shows that I burned 300 calories from teaching that class versus my Apple Watch didn't say anything. It probably tracks a little bit more activity calories, maybe a hundred, but that's it. So the only difference for that day was because I was teaching class. So I would say that my Apple Watch was definitely tracking more calories than Fitbit, even though for some activities, for some workouts, my Fitbit said you burn more calories, but at the end of the day, it evens out. And like I said, the difference between the Apple and the Fitbit was from the resting calories. So my Fitbit was telling me that my resting calories, which is my basal metabolic rate, was 1,203. So basically my Fitbit assumes that 
if I'm not moving, if I'm just laying in bed all day to keep myself alive, I burn 1,200 calories. Versus my Apple Watch, I think Apple Watch has a different algorithm. And also, I also connect Apple Watch with my other in-body scan data and everything. So my Apple Watch actually shows that my resting calories was actually 1,400. Even though my Fitbit tracks more active calories during the workout, but because my Apple resting calories was tracked higher, every day even though my apple active calories is a little lower my total calories tracked by apple is higher than fitbit except for that one day where my fitbit tracks my zone minute during teaching yoga so which one is more accurate well to really find a um, setter i'll probably have to wear a whoop so that it tells me how much calories exactly that i burn but let me tell you first of all it's the difference between the two is very minimal it's usually a hundred calories different my apple watch is probably more accurate in terms of my resting calories because um, I have a lot of lean muscle mass and I body fat percentage is lower than usual. So your basic, your basal metabolic rate is very different depending on your lean muscle mass and your body fat ratio. So I would say the truth is probably somewhere in between. Like for Wednesday, I, I probably burned 2,200 calories, which is in between the two. I think my Fitbit overtracked a little bit when I was teaching yoga, but my Apple Watch didn't recognize that activity at all, which is not fair to me because I was sweating just like the members who are doing yoga. Fairly similar but the truth is probably in between. None of these trackers are exactly accurate. So it's important to not just use those trackers as like a rule of thumb in terms of how much calories to eat, to lose weight or gain weight, to maintain weight. It's better to weigh yourself regularly to see that, oh, if I eat 2000 calories and maintaining my weight, it's probably my basal metabolic rate plus my activity level. It's better to do that instead of heavily relying on the, the trackers. And also the food labels, could be also inaccurate to 25% as well. So Alrighty, that's it for today's video. Thank you so much for watching and testing out two trackers with me. So as you can see, I now I only have the Apple Watch because my Fitbit completely died. Um, and guess what? It's not turning on no matter how it's trying to reset. And that's how it goes with all of my previous trackers was like, one day it just black screened and never worked again. So. The life expectancies of Fitbit, definitely not as long as Apple Watch. But I would say that if you're just doing fitness tracking for short term, let's say if you're trying to conceive or you're pregnant or if you just wanted to lose pregnancy weight or just using a tracker for short term purposes, Fitbit is great because Apple Watch is definitely an investment up from this thing, $800, super expensive. Versus a Fitbit tracker, especially the older generation to charge five, it's like $130. It's definitely worth it if you just want to track something long term within one year or two. And I would say if you don't wear your Fitbit in water, even though it's water resistant, it advertises water resistant, if you take it off when you take a shower or you go swim, the battery will last longer. And that's how I preserved my charge too. Um, it lasted me for two years because I wasn't wearing it in the shower. So yeah alrighty that's it for today's video thank you so much for watching i'll link the products that i use down below and i will see you in the next one bye